Northwestern's Peter Skoronsky has the chance to be the next great tackle for the New England Patriots. And that's just the start. Stick around. You're about to be locked in to Mock Draft Monday on the Locked On Patriots podcast. You are Locked On Patriots, your daily New England Patriots podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all of you, Foxborough faithful, and thank you once again for making Lockdown Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage and also your first listen every day. Remember, Lockdown Patriots is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube. So smash that subscribe button, download, subscribe to follow Lockdown Patriots wherever you get your podcasts. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's not a crisis line, it's not self help, it's professional therapy done securely online, available to people worldwide. And they have a special offer for my listeners. Get 10% off your first month at betterhelp.com slash locked on. Patriots fans, thank you once again for making Locked On Patriots the daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. I'm your host, Mike DeBate. I cover your New England Patriots for Patriots Country of Sports Illustrated. Let me know what's on your mind. Reach out to me on Twitter at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. And while you're out there showing some love to the Twitterverse, please be sure to follow the Locked On Patriots account as well at L-O underscore Patriots. And Pats fans, it is Mock Draft Monday. Mock Draft's back here on Locked On Patriots. And of course, if it's Mock Draft Monday, it's also hashtag Locked On Murph Monday. My good friend, the Count of Murphy Fisto himself, the legendary Thomas Murphy, will be joining me here in just a moment as we break down two amazing mock drafts to kick off the season. Folks, you are not going to want to miss these, including a draft that puts Northwestern's offensive tackle Peter Skaronsky in the crosshairs as the Patriots' top target. I think he's on to something. We're going to find out what Murph thinks. You know he loves talking about big round men up front, and that's exactly what we're going to do today. And it also is something that lends us quite nicely into the news of the day for the New England Patriots. That's for welcoming back another familiar face to help restore that order that they need to their fledgling offense. And that means a Monday morning report from ESPN. Pete Thamel all over this, indicating that University of Oregon assistant coach and former New England Patriot Adrian Clem has indeed agreed to join the Patriots offensive coaching staff, and he'll be back in the Foxborough fold this year. Now, it's yet to be confirmed by the team folks whether or not Adrian is officially taking on the role of the offensive line coach, but all signs seem to be pointing in that direction. Can't imagine him really doing anything else here on the staff. Other than doing that, he'll probably have some additional responsibilities, but that's going to be his primary. And we all know last year, the role held by Matt Patricia, not really a great season for the Pats offensive line. Adrian's got his work cut out for them, but he is the guy to do it, but no question about it. Adrian now becomes the third new coach added to the Pats offensive staff this season, joining, of course, Bill O'Brien, who was hired as the offensive coordinator a couple of weeks ago. And... Recent signing, offensive assistant Will Lying. Lying comes in, having worked with Bill O'Brien for a number of years at Penn State, in Houston with the Texans, and then, of course, with the University of Alabama. He's looking likely to be the tight ends coach this season. Got a lot of experience working with tight ends since he first broke in at Juanita College in uh, 2009. He coached the tight ends there, also helped to coach the tight ends in Houston with Bill O'Brien as well. Yeah, folks, that means that the Patriots are in need of a new offense, excuse me, a new tight ends coach. And that's because Nick Cayley is on his way to Tinseltown. He is also headed out of Foxborough. He will be now the new tight ends coach for Sean McVay and the Los Angeles Rams. So a lot of moving parts here for the Patriots coaching staff, but Clem is definitely a guy that the Patriots wanted. There's no question about it. Had the virtual interview, interviewed for the offensive coordinator position. It did end up going to Bill O'Brien, but 
Patriots were very impressed by Clem. They really liked the prowess that he showed in coordinating Oregon's run blocking schemes last year and also his ability to coordinate pass protection as well in the offensive line. That really was enough to impress the Patriots to bring him back for a second interview, which they did when the Pats coaching staff was in Las Vegas last week for the Shrine Bowl. And Clem is no stranger to the Patriots organization or Bill Belichick. Played his college football at the University of Hawaii, and he was selected by the team in the second round, the 46th overall pick of the 2000 NFL draft. It was Bill Belichick's first ever draft pick. So Adrian Clem coming home, big move for him, big move for the Patriots, because they will definitely get a standout athlete at the position, a guy that knows the ropes of playing offensive line here in New England, and someone who had... Really, I think the beginning of a very good career, unfortunately, a lot of it was held back by injury, uh, but Adrian is definitely someone that has come in and done a great job coordinating a lot of offenses and really a lot of offensive lines throughout his career, whether it be at the University of Oregon, whether it be at UCLA, or of course with the Pittsburgh Steelers in the NFL as well. He is the right man in the Pats estimation to fix their struggling offensive line. Now, this is not going to come without a cost. Reportedly, Adrian was making close or if maybe even in excess, we're not sure of the exact amount, but in or around the ballpark of $1 million per season. You have to think that the Patriots upped the ante a little bit in order to get him in uh, Foxborough. And indications were last week that this may have been off the table. Uh, We heard information from the Oregon camp that they didn't expect any changes to their coaching staff. Looked like Adrian was going to stay put, but apparently the Patriots were so impressed by him that they circled back, made one more push, and they were able to get their guy. And he's got his work cut out for them. The Patriots definitely underachieved on the offensive line in 2022. Trent Brown, Cole Strange, David Andrews, Michael Wainu, all coming back under contract for 2023. Of course, Isaiah Wynn is the big free agent out there. I don't expect him back, but Stranger things have happened. We'll wait and see when free agency starts, folks. But ultimately, the Patriots are going to have to decide on bringing back some of the reserve pieces that they have, guys like Connor McDermott, James Ferrant, and don't forget Yadni Kajust, who is a uh, restricted free agent as well. So good hire for the Patriots. He will be the guy. Now, will Adrian Clem be coaching a stout stud rookie offensive tackle? Well, according to one of the mock drafts that was submitted for our show today, he certainly will in the form of Peter Skaronsky of Northwestern, one of the highest touted out offensive tackles out there. I love the guy. Murph is going to give his opinion. You can probably guess which way that's going to go, folks. Murph is pretty enamored with this guy, too. And you, I think, will be impressed by the great mock drafts that we've had submitted today by our good friends, Andrew Carraway and our man, LJ. We are going to dive right into Mock Draft Monday, musing the draft here on Locked On Patriots, when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Therapy Online. Folks, we live in complex times, and whether it be emotional stress or financial stress or health-related stress, social stress brought on by anxiety, trying therapy can help you unload that stress and move forward in gaining emotional healing. Unfortunately, life does not come with a user manual, so when it's not working for you, it's normal to feel stuck. Everyone deserves to feel their best, and BetterHelp makes it easier to get started. As the world's largest therapy service, they've matched millions of people with professionally licensed and vetted therapists available 100% online. All the benefits of in-person therapy, plus it's a more convenient, more accessible, and more affordable option. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to match with a therapist, and if things aren't clicking, you can easily switch to a new therapist anytime. It could not be simpler. So get unstuck with BetterHelp. Learn more and save 10% off your first month at BetterHelp.com slash locked on. That's BetterHelp.com slash locked on. Patriots fans, today's episode is sponsored by our good friends over at FanDuel. This year, the only app you need at your Super Bowl party is indeed FanDuel, America's number one sports book. And we're really excited about our sports betting partner for Locked On because they're the number one sports book in America. 
FanDuel. And if you're new to FanDuel, that's even better because they have so many great features that make betting on sports fun and easy. Download FanDuel now and you can bet on Super Bowl 57 with a no sweat first bet. You'll get up to $3,000 back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. FanDuel lets you bet on everything from the money line to the point spreads to who will score a touchdown. The FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, it's secure, and it's super easy to use. And best of all, you can get paid on your winnings instantly. So join FanDuel today at FanDuel.com slash LockedOn, and you can claim your first no-sweat first bet on Super Bowl 57. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the special, official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Patriots fans, one of my favorite aspects of being host here on Locked On Patriots is getting the chance to interact with all of you, the great listeners out there of Locked On Patriots. And I never exaggerate when I say that I appreciate every single one of you from the bottom of my heart from taking time out of your busy schedule to spend with me here on Locked On Patriots and making us, of course, a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. Today, though, folks... It's back, and he's back. That's right. The legendary Thomas Murphy of E2G Sports joins me. It's hashtag Lock on Murph Monday, but it is also the kickoff of interactive season back in full swing. It is Mock Draft Monday, but Murph, we're careful with that because, you know, as you know, we indulge in draft musings here on Locked on Patriots. There will be no mocking, mocking of the draft. No, we do not make fun of the draft in any way, shape, or form. So... <laughs> Murph, it's great to be back here on hashtag Musing the Draft Monday, um, and I can't think of any better place to be, or I can't think of anyone I'd rather share the microphone with today to embark on this endeavor, my friend. Thank you, my friend. Yeah, this is this is just like the most wonderful time of the year, isn't it? It truly uh, really is. You can we, hear Andy we, Williams singing right now yep. if you listen closely. <laughs> We get to interact with everybody. We we really get into the one thing I like doing more than uh, than cutting keys for you all during the season is is doing this, getting into the, into mock drafts, getting ready for the Patriots draft, and to have Bill Belichick break my heart again and again and again. <laughs> but we got a couple of really good ones this week that we're going to kick this off with, and it, it should just. Oh, I'm so happy. I woke up super early this morning looking forward to this, and uh, let's get into it. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get right into it, and we're going to start off with one of our true mock draft all-stars here on Locked On Patriots. He's been a fan favorite now for the last couple of years. He has graced the airwaves here on Locked On Patriots on occasion to lend his draft wisdom and counsel, and folks, we're definitely looking forward to having him back at least a couple of times yeah. heading into the draft this year. Our good friend, Andrew Caraway at Caraway 6 on Twitter. And Murph, through the brilliance of technology, which I've finally been able to figure out. I'm not quite as bad as Bill with the snap face stuff, but almost as bad. But look at that, my friend. Look we have that. an interactive mock oh draft right here. Andrew did a tremendous job with this one. He really does deserve an awful lot of credit. And that's something that I think we're really, really looking forward to. Folks, if you're watching on YouTube, you can definitely see right in between Murph and I right now is this draft submitted by Andrew Carraway. And Andrew kicks this off with a trade. He trades the number 14 pick to the Washington Commanders. In return, Patriots get a pretty good, nice little haul here. They get the 16th pick in the 2022 and, and the 2023, excuse me, NFL draft, the number 97 pick in the third round and pick number 152 in the fifth round. And no question about it. He goes right for it, Murph. You liked this one. Yeah. I like mm. this one. There's nothing to not like mm. about this one. Peter Skaronsky, Northwestern, the tackle, the probably the most de highly decorated tackle coming out of this class when it comes to what the Patriots need. Um, is there anything that we can say negative about this first pick? I don't think so. If no, this gets man. there at number 16, no, the Patriots me. have to run to the podium. Yeah, bring it bring it to me. If he is there at 16, you're taking it. Bring me all your glumkies, bring me your pierogies, and bring me your scronskies. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> oh my God. If there is an if there's a more NFL ready uh tackle in this draft i don't i haven't found him man i i love mm. this kid i would trade up into the top 10 to grab peter skronsky yeah i think in a lot of ways uh patriots fans would agree and anyone that knows the needs on this offensive line right now knows that this kid 
is the type of generational talent at this position that the Patriots haven't had in quite some time. Yeah. They really, really could change the complexity of their offensive line by bringing this kid in. One of the best pass blockers that I've seen in decades. Yeah. Oh, f- phenomenal. The fundamentals pop right off the page Mm -hmm. with Peter. There's no question about it. Go and watch his film. Folks, if you haven't, I definitely encourage you, go out to YouTube, check out some of the Mm. the, the footage that's out there on him. He really is tremendous. Excellent hands. Um, Really, I think a a plethora, Murph, (laughs) Uh, of pass sets. Really, he can change uh, his approach based on what the pass rusher is going to do. That type of wisdom, that type of instinct is not something you usually see in a player this young but he's got right. it. He just has it. Um, he can take the vertical sets. He can challenge the speed on uh, his opponents, or he can get into the short set type rusher as well. Yep. This is also something that he's able to do. He can force them to play through his frame. Patriots haven't had that kind of a talent on the line in quite some time. Yeah, they, they that's that's for sure. You you've got to go way back. I mean, way way back into the uh, into the way back machine for lack of a better term, uh, to, to find somebody that, that is this set. Um, bring in Skronsky in, excuse me, he would immediately slide into the onto the left side and let Junior frickin' move back over to the right where he's very happy and, and still under contract for a year. Um, mm. This is somebody that is not going to take a ton of coaching up. Uh, obviously, there there is a, a difference between – Blocking at Northwestern and blocking in the NFL, but it, it, there, there's no one better in this draft. I, this is an A draft for me, uh, right off the right off the top with these first three or four picks that that he's got going here. But Skronsky is just the cherry on top. Yeah, it truly is. He really is the cherry on top. And Andrew, right off the bat, we're loving what you've done, my friend, and yep. uh, we thank you for your submission. Uh, but we're moving right along, Murph, because this is not a draft that takes the foot off the accelerator anytime soon uh goes for cornerback in round two a pick number 46 a patriot pick that they do have uh and he goes with garrett williams out of syracuse um really i think an excellent zone prospect here uh with garrett Uh, i love the way he plays in this there is an injury question without any uh doubt about that but at the same time if the patriots are looking to continue some of the zone looks that we had this right. is a pretty solid pick for the Patriots as well. This this really is. This kid's got zone instincts that that jump off the page, and and he would definitely. A lot of people are going to look at this and say, "What? Huh? What are you talking about? Garrett Williams? Who who's Garrett Williams? Garrett Williams spent the entire season last year recovering from an ACL injury, and that's why you're not you didn't hear a lot more of him all season long. This is a fantastic pick. It uh it, with one and two. Uh, really goes out and and solidifies two needs. Uh, Williams is a kid that will probably have to start on pup this year, but y- you've got to pay a little bit of a price to get this kind of a talent, and I don't mind paying it at uh, number forty six in the second round. That's for sure. He he, <laughs> he was he was a legitimate top twenty pick without this uh, without the injury that he had. Do you do you agree, Michael? Yeah, I do. I agree. And I think he would have been definitely uh, a lot more highly touted than he is had he become into this draft yeah. healthy. But, you know, look, I mean, the Patriots have not shied away from guys like this where they feel this could be a potentially great fit in New England. Uh, yeah. They're they're not going to let an injury history deter them from making the picks. We saw no. them do it with Cameron McGrone a couple of years yeah. ago. Uh, we've seen them do it with uh, Dominique Easley. All right, I know, folks. Oh, People don't bring up stuff at the screen means. right Come now. Come on, this is not the same <laughs> thing. But, but, you, but you get the idea of what they're – the Patriots are not going to let that type of thing right. deter them from bringing in a guy that they feel could be a good fit. Now, no question about it. There is a situation where you know you have to you have to basically be able to uh, you know perform on the field if right. you're going to uh, uh, to stick around. But if the Patriots see potential, they will do that. This kid's a good short area quickness, pretty good speed, like the way he can change direction. The one thing that I do wish about Garrett, and I think would make me a lot back, more comfortable with this back pick, to the ball. Yeah, a little bit back to ball, no question about it. And it does it. it comes into the fact that I don't think he had a whole lot of opportunities to play press coverage, to play man right. coverage, um, because 
Syracuse runs a very no. zone heavy, yep. uh, you know, scheme. And that's really where he was able to, uh, uh, to pop. I think the Patriots are going to try to return a little bit more to some of the man coverages that we saw. I think that's what they'd like to do. And if that's the case, then you wonder about the potential fit there. Yeah. But in terms of athleticism and in terms of potential, I like this pick an awful lot from Me Andrews. Too. So, so Me too. he's yeah, a too. good tackler. He's a good guy when you're, when you're sitting in zone, but you're right. He didn't play a lot of press man up there. It's not his ball game. He doesn't do really well with his back uh, to the, uh, the line of scrimmage, but a, uh, the kid's talented. The kid's yeah. really freaking talented. He's a playmaker back there. He's mm-hmm. somebody that's gonna that's gonna uh, read the eyes of the quarterback and make a quick break on the ball. He it's it's something that that's needed. I like his size, and I think that that he translate here really really well. Yeah, absolutely. I think he uh, uh, translates here really well as well. Um, moving right along, we're going to move the edge. Uh, the first time that we've talked a little bit about the defensive front seven uh, here on uh, Locked On Patriots when it comes to prospects. But, you know, the Patriots are looking to fill as many holes with as many good players as they possibly can. Patriots seldom draft for need. They usually draft for fit. And uh, right. Isaiah Folksy coming out of Notre Dame. Murph, your thoughts on this kid. Uh, a lot of potential, a lot of buzz surrounding him. Uh, a little bit uh, coming into the Senior Bowl. What What are your thoughts on Folksy here uh, at uh, third round, number 76? Yeah, I love it. He, he He's a, a fantastic pass rusher. He's got, you know, violent, uh, a violent pass rusher is a, is a great way to, uh, to, to talk about this kid. He breaks off of... Uh, and disengages as well as anybody in this draft. I think it's a fantastic pick. Yeah, I do. I agree with you as well. Look, there's all kinds of awards, all kinds of uh, uh, accolades that surrounded him from his time at Notre Dame. Uh, This would be a really solid pick for the New England Patriots, an opportunity to learn from some of the better edge rushers right now. And, you know, I I think that uh, that counts for an awful lot. Uh, when it comes to uh, to what this team needs to do. So great job uh, when it comes to uh, Andrew. I really, really like this. Uh, Murph, going up and down here, we mentioned Christopher Smith last week an awful lot. Right. You know my feelings on him. You know I'm yep. really, really happy uh, with that pick and seeing him there. Uh, when you look top to bottom, what uh, diamond in the rough do you think Andrew identified and maybe nailed spot on? All right. That will you know Schumacher down there at uh 192 I really love I think he's he could come in here and be that third tight end I love his blocking game he didn't get enough chance to uh to catch the ball there at Michigan I think he's going to do a lot better there and um you know, oh god Rick, Carter Warren yeah okay that that that's that's a kid that's a kid that's going to come in here and we talked about depth an awful lot. He might not be depth this year, but going forward, man, if you can get him onto the practice squad, give him some time to to learn from the coaches here, you know, depending on who the coach is going to be. It could be me. You don't know. Um, yeah, I like that pick also. And, of course, you know, the, the great Jake Moody. I, I love what, what he did late with the Michigan guys. <laughs> yeah, I also love what he did with the Michigan guys as well. And uh, Carter Warren is the guy that I'm really looking at in terms of a uh, um, uh, a late, possible late, uh, you know, diamond in the rough here. Right. Uh, there is there are issues when it comes to his run blocking. There's no yeah. question about it. Take a look at some of the tape uh, from him at Pitt. Uh, I wish he was a little meaner. That. Yeah, and I think that that will come, maybe a little bit of that will come with the NFL kind of grizzling some of these guys and really kind of hardening them a little bit. Uh, but great arm length, uh, really quick kick slide. If you want to, <laughs> if you want to yeah, do that, you definitely get, take a look. Yep. Yeah, uh, that'll that'll be something that pops on uh, the film that you watch on this kid. But if you can pick him up at a late round flyer like this, I yeah. think uh, you know he picks him up six round, two ten. Yeah, this yep. be pretty good. I like that uh, uh, pick, and again, I think Shoemaker is another one that uh, could do some uh, uh, some damage here as well. So, Andrew, what can we say? We thank you, my friend, for yep. uh, submitting the uh, the mock draft Always today. Uh, this one, yeah, I think uh, I think a solid, <laughs> I think a solid uh, B plus to an A uh, from oh, me. Oh, without a I doubt. Think 
I think he did a phenomenal a job. Yeah, you know what? Erase the B plus. I don't know what the hell I'm thinking. Yeah, I'm giving that's it an A, a draft. On this one. This, yeah, this he is really, an A draft. Yeah. you know, you get Skoronsky yeah. at number sixteen. Right, yeah, you're doing something right. You are manipulating the gods and, and the draft gods at that point in a, in a really really good direction. So, Andrew, for the cap, thank you, right. my friend. Awesome the only stuff. the only thing better the only thing better is if you got my guy Deuce Vaughn, who is who is my <laughs> my draft pinky yeah. this year. I want Deuce Vaughn on this team. Something awful. If for no other reason, just the name. I mean, imagine yeah. the marketing capabilities. No, I'm getting a side <laughs> post. Good. No, good, good blue chipper there as well. And folks, we are not done amusing the draft just yet because another one of our all stars came in with a draft that, as oh Randy Jackson God. would say, this guy is in it to win it. Now, did he win it? Murph and I are going to talk about that in just a moment. But our guy LJ definitely swung for the fences on this one. And if for no other reason, it's going to be an entertaining thing to go through in just a moment when this episode of the Locked On Patriots podcast continues. But first, folks, Valentine's Day is coming up, which means romance is in the air more than usual. I don't need to tell all you lovebirds out there that you've probably had your date plans on the calendar for weeks. If you haven't, you really should have. But yep. if you have found the perfect Valentine's Day gift, or if you haven't, I should say yet, whether you're celebrating this day of romance or whether you're ready to pop the question, you can find jewelry as unique as she is with the modern convenience of online shopping at BlueNile.com. At BlueNile.com, you can find the perfect piece of jewelry for life's special moments or even create the custom engagement ring of your dreams. Blue Nile's diamond price guarantee allows you to compare a competitor's diamond against one of theirs, and Blue Nile can even meet or beat their price. They also provide expert guidance, in-depth educational materials on engagement rings, and other unique online tools for any gift that you may choose that place you in control. So you can forget about the usual hassles of the jewelry shopping process, and you can focus on the romance. Every order is insured. It arrives quickly in discreet packaging that won't give away what's inside. Shipping is free, and so are the returns. So right now, you can save up to 50% at BlueNile.com. That's BlueNile.com for up to 50% off BlueNile.com. Patriots fans, the legendary Thomas Murphy joins me here today, columnist extraordinaire at E2GSports.com, and also my musing the draft tag team partner for the rest of the draft season. But we're already off to a great start. Our good friend Andrew Caraway at Caraway6 on Twitter, knocking it out of the park on his first swing. Uh, we're right now in the thralls, but got to give a lot of credit to our guy LJ at show underscore one. He has submitted this abbreviated version of mock draft Monday here on locked on on Patriots. And this is the second one we received Murph and boy, I'll tell you, LJ did not hold back here. No, as the late great gorilla monsoon would say a lot of intestinal fortitude on this draft. And I will applaud him. I think he did an admirable job in getting some of the guys that I know he'd love to see here in New England, um, we'll kick it right off, Murph. The Patriots get their wide receiver. <laughs> they get their wide receiver when it LJ comes to LJ. gets his wide receiver. Yeah, absolutely. A <laughs> slot specialist in Jackson Smith, Najiba. And now, when you look at what this kid brings to the table, Murph, the first thing that stands out to me with this pick is route running. Yeah. One of the better, one of the better route runners yeah. in this draft. Without a doubt, man. One of one of the crispest route runners that that's that's available in this draft. I just think that that at twenty two, I'm I'm I need I need the offensive line to be taken care of. You you've got to block before you can get the ball to. But this kid is a fantastic talent. Um, LJ really scratched the back of my neck because I love the yak that this kid gets. Every time somebody tries to wrap to wrap him up, he is breaking away from a tackle. Yak is 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 the word, and yak mm -hmm. is what I love, and I do. I like this pick, LJ. It was it was a very bold move for you to move down in the way that you did, but you brought back a ton. <laughs> he did bring back a ton folks. You can see the trades that are there that are listed. Definitely go ahead and check these out. Uh, a lot of great stuff here. Um, you know, that number 14 goes to the Baltimore Ravens, but boy, you picked up a lot from Baltimore really kind of took advantage of them and turned that number 22 pick, uh, which was the crown jewel of your trade into Jackson. Uh, to me, that's, that's great. And again, 
I love route standing route runners. Yeah. I've had a thing for, you know, guys like Justin Jefferson and guys like Chris Olave from last year, just really, yeah. really amazing route runners. Even when Stefan Diggs was available as a free agent, I salivated over watching him catch passes here in New England, potentially from Tom Brady at the time. Yeah. But, you know, it really just, I think it, it lends itself into the way the Patriots love to play offense. There's no right. question about it. This kid can get space. CJ Stroud loved him for a reason, but right. the one thing I, I did one thing that I did see with him, correct me if I'm wrong here, top end speed. Uh yeah. not the best in terms of that. If the Patriots no. are looking for a WR one, even out of the slot, um, they may need a little more speed in here. That's it. That's it. I, I, I wholeheartedly agree. But you, when you go back and you look at this kid, as a sophomore, he led Ohio State in receiving uh, a team that had Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave, <laughs> and, and he had 95 <laughs> catches for 15, almost 1600 yards, 1595, just knocking on that sure. door. Mm-hmm. And um, uh, you know, this then as a as a junior, he played only 60 snaps because of hamstring injury that that mm-hmm. he had. That's something that you don't really need to keep too much of an eye on, but it's something that you need to think about. It, it's just. The way LJ went at the top of this draft, I would have went in a different way. But you, you can't argue with the haul that he brought back later on. Yeah, without question. Without question. Very, very decent haul. And moving on, my friend, uh, because we're not just all about the offense here. No. Oh, LJ, I know, got uh, the guy that he wanted. Um, when you look at the second round here, number 46, another Michigan guy, Murph, another Wolverine finding his way into the Patriots' end house, um, Maisie Smith. Uh, this one... To me, uh, looked like like there was some potential here. What were your thoughts on this? Because you know the Michigan guys as well are better than anyone else in the in the business right now. Yeah, I mean it's really hard to move him out of the way if you're trying to run on on Maisie Smith. <laughs> um, the only the only question I have uh, is, you know, the the true progression over four years. That, that that's it. You'll. Uh, He's not somebody that's going to play on the outside. He doesn't get after the quarterback a ton, but he stops the run like like few other people in this draft. Mm, absolutely. And if the Patriots are looking for uh, you know a little bit more increased presence with the run, although I do want to give the front line credit this year. I really think yeah. the defensive front did a very good job of fixing some of the deficiencies that they had on the run in 2021. This is something we knocked them for, especially not being able to stop the Buffalo Bills in that playoff right. game essentially ran rough shot over them. You didn't see a whole lot of that this year with the New England Patriots. And no. Barmore, I think, uh, you know, coming into his own, missing some time with injury, helped. Lawrence Guy, I thought, stepped up tremendously. But Gotcha had a, de- had a better season than he did his first year here in New England. So these types of things are good. If you're looking to back build, uh, you know, Risey right. Smith is definitely someone. Build that from strength. And yeah. and that's that's what they're doing here. Um, it, uh, Barmore has had some injury issues over his first two seasons this is a kid that can come in and start and and not start but be a part of a, of this fine rotation that the, the patriots have up front for mm-hmm. a very very long time okay yeah. it's just it's another thing we Bill doesn't ask the interior guys to get after the quarterback much, and he fits that he fits that profile. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, without any question. Uh, you know, this is this is more of a stationary pick. This is more of a stationary yep. guy. But uh, again, if this is what you're looking for in terms of a guy that does one thing, and I don't, I hate saying that because these guys all do more than one thing. But if there's one thing he specializes in and does it very well, uh, Maisie Smith, yeah, I think could be I, a very good. He, pick he's for gonna he's gonna help Bill do what Bill likes to do on the back end, work those light boxes up front, right. and uh, and allow them to stop the run, and and use that amoeba defense to its its uh, uh, pinnacle. Yep, without any question, without any question. Third round, Murph. Uh, we're uh, going to talk just a little bit about this because this is definitely an eye catcher, I think, for a lot of people yeah. that are on, um, you know, watching this on YouTube, seeing the uh, the uh, uh, the placard for this mock draft. Of course, folks, if you're listening to this audio wise, uh, you can catch. We're going to be tweeting these out from the Locked On Patriots account, so you can catch all of the picks that LJ and Andrew had uh, this, right. for this week's mock draft. But uh, Endon Hooker out of Tennessee, uh, one of the more dynamic talents in this draft. Uh, no question about it. Highly rated quarterback, highly touted quarterback. Um, 
third round, 88, good value yeah. here for LJ, no question about it. Oh, yeah. And you and I talked about this a little bit offline. Do you worry about the fit in a Bill O'Brien offense? Yeah, I do. Um, that That's about the only thing that that it really worries me is the fact that the offense that that the Patriots seem to be turning back a page to mm-hmm. is not the offense that uh, that he's going to fit into. Uh, he's he's a a man that a lot of people got on O'Brien for for how things went offensively last year at Alabama, but that was simply because he was he was I don't want to say hamstrung, but he was he he wasn't didn't have the right quarterback for the environment that that he wanted to work in. And what the Patriots have here with Mac Jones is the quarterback that that he if Bill O'Brien had been the offensive coordinator when Mac Jones was was at Alabama, there would have been no issue whatsoever. And that's mm. one of the reasons he came in here. Uh, Hooker is is somebody that just does not fit the scheme here. I like to have quarterbacks that uh if you if one steps if if one gets sidelined you can slide the other one right in and the playbook doesn't have to change for that game uh with hooker it would yeah yeah without any question and you know i mean that's not to say that the patriots are not adaptable if you're going to adapt you have to adapt for the right quarterback i think hooker definitely possesses the intangibles and the skill set to be that guy yeah uh you just have to wonder what (laughs) excuse me what the patriots are going to do i think they're well set at the backup position, I like Bailey Zappi in terms of his ability to mimic what Mac Jones can do, and yep. at you know times even come in, maybe even do it a little bit better. We saw him yeah. do that a little bit this year, so I think the Patriots are set there. I don't look for them to go in that direction, but we didn't think they would last year either, and they came away with Bailey. So um, again, LJ definitely a, a, an A for ingenuity without any question. Uh, before we take our lead from LJ's draft, Murph, instead of going in the direction of hidden gems. Uh, he went a little center happy in the second half of this draft. Um, you know, all of the team coming out of Michigan at uh, 125 in the fourth round uh, yeah. goes to the well again. Cedric Van Praan coming out of Georgia at right. pick number 127 in the fourth round. And then Ricky Stromberg at the sixth round out of Arkansas. <laughs> Obviously, the Patriots are probably not going to invest this much capital no. in, in, the, in the position, but... Out of these three guys, when you look at the center position, because I know you like these big round guys in the middle, Murph. I know you love them. Um, anybody stand out to you uh, on this three? Who would you take a flyer on if you're the New England Patriots? Hey, probably the Michigan kid. Uh, I, mm. I just like the way that they translate into into what the Patriots are doing. But that's not to say Van Pran is a fantastic center. He and is. um, he, he really is. He, he's somebody that would be a project. What I think LJ did here was – you know, he had all these late round picks. He sees what he sees the need in the future. Maybe he's thinking that that somebody can slip in at guard and 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 play multiple positions. He ignored it at the top of the draft and he tried to make up for it, you know, <laughs> towards the middle and the late and 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 down the bottom. Uh see if um, you know, take these three three very good players and see what sticks here in this system. Uh, it, it was, it was a good draft. I really like it. Uh, Carter Warren down there at from Pitt. I really, really love. Yeah. Warren definitely is someone, especially at the tackle position. Versatility brings yeah. you an awful lot. I love that pick as well. So LJ did a really good job here. I'm going to sing the praises of Ricky Stromberg out of uh, Arkansas go. for just a moment. Talk to a Patriot scout this weekend. And as you know, the Patriots had a heavy presence yep. down in Las Vegas this past week for the Shrine Bowl. Ricky was there, and the one thing that seemed to stand out about this kid, versatility, he's an interior guy. He's not going to yeah. be a tackle, folks. He's, he could play, he could play he's a center, any of the, yep, he but he can play, play either one of the guard positions as well. Right. Success in the SEC, that's something that I think the Patriots love to see, a uh, big-time conference. You have success there against quality opponents. Uh, definitely the strength of his frame, not a question there. He's got it. Good, solid step out of his first stance. I'm quoting directly now from the scout because this is something that I think the Patriots really, really liked seeing. Um, you know, who knows? If this is a potential late-round selection like, uh, you know, LJ has here, I can see the Patriots taking a late-round flyer. I don't mm-hmm. think this is the type of guy you trade up for, but good potential. Pats don't have an immediate need on the interior. I think they're well set there at the starting position, at least for a number, at least for a couple of years to come. As long as David Andrews wants to have that center position, I think it's his until he decides he wants to retire. You've got Cody Rossi waiting in the wings for perhaps. 
right. guard position, full strange, Michael Wayne, uh, I think that could be one of the more dominant guard tandems in the league when strange finally comes into his own. I think you're going to see that. So that's a guy I'm keeping my eye on, but uh, who are you keeping your eye on folks? We'd love to hear more from you when it comes to the draft and when it comes to mock drafts, Murph, before we take our leave of uh, uh, LJ here, uh, and I know I said that earlier, but <laughs> this time I really mean it folks. Um, Great for uh, for LJ's work here. I, I think a solid yeah. B, B plus here for oh, uh, LJ. Easily, Great start. Easily a B. Easily a B. Yep. 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 Definitely. Um, and we thank our good friends, Andrew Carraway and LJ, for submitting. But, folks, we are just scratching the surface here when it comes to Locked On Patriots and Mock Draft Monday or Musing the Draft Monday. We want to hear from you. We would love to see your great mock drafts, your great work, your thoughts on what the Patriots should do. If you're going to do so, each and every Monday, Murph and I will be breaking down mock drafts here on the Blocked On Patriots podcast right through draft time. So submit them. Best thing to do is to send a tweet to Locked On Patriots at LO underscore Patriots. Tag myself at M-D-A-B-A-T-E-N-F-L. Tag Murph as well at T Murph 207. And definitely, folks, we look forward to interacting with each and every one of you. If you want to Give your thoughts on the Patriots draft without submitting one. You can always do so in the comments section on YouTube, or you can definitely uh, send us a note at LO underscore Patriots as well. Murph, it's always fun. We're off to a great start here on Mock Draft Monday here on Locked On Patriots. It's going to be a fun season, my friend. It is. It really is. Hey, guys, no, no, back off with the trades. We've only got so much time here. Back off with the trades. <laughs> Yeah. You know what, folks? You know, keep them coming. Keep them coming however you want to craft right. that. Murph and I will find a way to work it in. Uh, but no, all kidding aside, we really love this time of year. Uh, we do. We seem like we're smiling and laughing a bit more right now. It really is because it's just it is the most wonderful time yeah. of the year here on the pod and really for all of us that just love what we do for a living here and then be able to break down, you know, draft profiles and things like that with all of you is really some of my favorite work that I do here on Lockdown Patriots. So in the meantime, folks, thank you for making time in your schedule to make Lockdown Patriots a daily part of your New England Patriots coverage. If you've made us your first listen, please make your second listen. Our good friends over at the Locked On NFL podcast. It is Super Bowl week. Boots on the ground in Glendale. The New, England, the New England Patriots may not be in the Super Bowl this year, folks, but that doesn't mean that the coverage stops all, all, all across the Lockdown Podcast Network. Great coverage going on. Tip of the cap, nod to the gods, to my good friends over at Lockdown Chiefs, Lockdown Eagles, who are definitely doing their due diligence to bring you the great coverage this week. But definitely check them out wherever you get your podcasts. And as for Lockdown Patriots, please smash that subscribe button and download, subscribe to, and follow wherever you get your podcasts. On behalf of my good friend, Thomas Murphy, I'm Mike DeBate. Please continue to stay safe and stay well. Be the change you wish to see in the world. Have a great day, everyone.